checking the LinkedIn to see if it's showing up yeah. there. Yeah, we are online. We we are live. <laughs> okay. Hello, Daniel. Um, it's good to have you here. And um, let us just introduce ourselves to uh, to the audience, to those who are watching us today. And um, yeah, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, my guest today is Daniel Danishi. Uh, we. Um, met on LinkedIn and one of the discussions that were related to um, reading, extensive reading. And um, we, since then we have exchanged a few ideas about uh, the importance of reading. This is something that I've been uh, talking and discussing for quite a long time uh, in the framework of uh, courses in my studio in Lingua.com. And um, and that's it. Daniel, would you like to say a few words about yeah, sure. yourself and uh, about what you do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thanks. Thanks again for having me for this talk. I love to talk about books. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I am. How, how to introduce myself? I am. Yeah, I love reading, reading nonfiction books. I'm an engineer. I have started some companies in the past, so I'm like kind of also want to be some entrepreneur. And I would say that's it. Engineer, ex-founder, uh, like, and lover, uh, and book lover. That's And book that's lover. <laughs> that's, yes. I, I guess, that's great. Uh, well, people who read uh, my blog know that I talk a lot about education, education technology, uh, reading and technology and um, surprisingly uh, the connection between reading and technology uh, occurs to be something that you uh, you voluntarily do uh, in the recent period so could you tell just a few words about <laughs> uh, what you're um, on right now so yeah, I I started a project like eight eight months ago about uh, it was about a tool and application for readers because I felt the need myself. I tried to search App Store for something I had in mind, you know, a, a, an app that you can track your bookshelf and also track your sessions and also track your notes. So an app that you can easily take notes because now we are at the point that. Uh, that the text recognition with these uh, iPhones are, are super, super easy also with Android phones. So now taking notes always, always was a hassle for me. And it took one hour, even if, if I read for one hour, I had to take notes for another hour. So, and moving these notes and, and, uh, and my highlights to somewhere more digital so I can search them later. So it, it, it was kind of, kind of a big deal. And then for me, and then I decided, okay, maybe, and I was using like four or five different applications to do all these sort of sort of things. And then also on one app, I would see all the highlights and things like that. And another, I was tracking my shelves on another, I was taking notes. It was, and I decided, okay, let's, uh, let, let's, let's put all of these ideas, great ideas into maybe one application. And that's, that's what I did. And uh, yeah. And also mm -hmm. showing some, some, something like, uh, uh, if you know this uh, this learning language learning app Duolingo, so yeah, some sure. kind of like yeah some gamification things like that. I don't know your streaks, how many days you read, how many hours you read, how many sessions you had. That's something that motivates also people to read. Maybe having some social part to it. You see other readers checking out their shelves and things like that. So I, I combined all these ideas into this app uh, called BookSense, which I released like two, three months ago. And I'm still oh. working on it and I'm still adding things to it. Oh, that's perfect. That sounds very interesting. And uh, I'd be very happy if we kind of return to that later on in, the, in this uh, conversation. And probably you'll share also um, the link to um, to the app with uh, the audience who's watching us today. Um, so uh, uh, you mentioned the the uh, importance of reading, and you know uh, that you mentioned that 
sometimes uh, it, when you talked about your app, you said that, you know, there's a, there are some gamification elements that encourage people to read. I've been thinking about this um, recently because I've, you know, I've, I talk, uh, I try to read every day. And um, um, I guess before, when I was much, much younger, it was, um, you know, I was a binge reader. I could read tons of books and because I had lots of time obviously <laughs> today you know with you know with busy uh, schedule and you know with kids it's much harder to find this free time when you can just sit down and read for hours uh, however um, I a few years ago I decided that it's just not normal for me to not read at all uh, and this was a situation I just noticed that I wasn't reading enough for fun. I wasn't reading something that I was curious about. I just had, uh, you know, I just had time to read for work and this wasn't obviously wasn't enough. So I made it, I tried to create a new habit. I sit down every morning before I start work, I sit down and read uh, a chapter in a book and, uh, and that started like that. So um, uh, the question is, um, do you, uh, I started talking about this with, with others. And, uh, I noticed that sometimes people, you know, just feel it extremely difficult to motivate themselves to, to read. So first of all, why do you think reading is so important? Um, and why do you want to motivate others to read, um, books? So, yeah, reading. So there was this quote I really liked about uh, about about reading that says, "Those uh, those who don't read, uh, there is no significant difference between those who don't read and those who can't read." So so this is, <laughs> and 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 I and I have thought of this a lot, and I say, okay, that that that's so true because uh, because many people just uh, learn learn to read in the school, and then once the once they are graduated from the high school or university and they are pretty much done with reading. Many people, it's like majority of people are like that. And they just forget about it and they just maybe use it a, a, a bit of it for work or something, but but not really. They don't take advantage of, of the, the all these great sources of knowledge available. And uh, and it's yeah. So why it's important? I think one of the one of the main things that I always think of is that reading is learning, and le learning what? So the question is then learning what? So one thing that I that I think uh, reading will help is active listening, because uh, when you're reading, basically, essentially, you are engaging in a one big conversation with the author, and this can translate into better listening listening skills when you are very when you are in a real conversation with someone else. And this is, I think, is active listening is the most important communication skill that one can develop. And, and reading will give you that. This is just one of them. Another one, I think, is, is the new vocabularies. And uh, when you have more vocabulary, you can express yourself more efficiently and more precisely. And this is, this is another advantage. One word that I can think of is that uh, is, is, is something that I heard from... Uh, from the podcast from Andrew Huberman, it was about language frequency and the speech, and I'm and I'm quoting him here. He says, "As we read, we are generating a very low levels of motor activity in our throat. That is, we are speaking the words that we are reading at a level below the perception of sound, or our own perception of those words. But if we, if one were to put an amplifier to measure the firing of, the, of those muscles in our vocal cords, we find that as we are reading information, we are actually speaking that information. So how about that? So reading is kind of wow. practicing speaking. So <gasps> as you read, you're just practicing. That's an amazing thing. <laughs> yeah, it's, so... it's crazy. I actually uh, have, um, I actually totally uh, believe this is, this is the case. Um, my grandmother grew up um, as a, an Yiddish speaker. She didn't know any other languages other than Yiddish. It's a 
a language spoken that was spoken by Jews in Eastern Europe mostly. Um, but when she grew up, she moved to um, Russia and she learned Russian as a foreign language. And um, every time she read a newspaper, I remember that I could, you know, I saw like really tiny movements when she read, I, I could actually mm -hmm. read her lip <laughs> and, and know exactly which newspaper or which article she was reading according to this tiny movement. They were really tiny and she wasn't aware of that. But that means that actually uh, when you learn a foreign language, you could, you know, reading would develop your ability to speak in that language, maybe even better than you expected <laughs> you could. Exactly. That is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is this is fascinating, fascinating insight I I, I heard from Anna yeah. Huberman. So there there are two more things that I want to mention about the importance of reading. Is one is uh, I think one big part of it is this exposure to different perspectives. So reading really exposes you to these different viewpoints, cultures, and experiences. For example, so as an an engineer often thinks uh, thinks in terms of systems. A psychologist thinks in terms of incentives and a businessman may think in terms of opportunity cost and risk reward. So all of these people, they see part of the picture, uh, the part that makes sense to them, but none of them, however, sees the entire situation until they think in a multidisciplinary way. So being able to accurately describe the full scope of a situation is the first step to understanding it. And the more lenses we use on a given problem, the more of the reality reveals itself. And the more of the reality we see, the more we understand. And understanding is everything. So reading really broadens your, uh, your understanding of the world and can make us more uh, empathetic and an effective communicator when uh, interacting with other people, with diverse, especially with diverse backgrounds. And so this exposure to different perspectives and viewpoints make us more open-minded, right? And help you really develop more mental models of how the world really works, which uh, significantly improves your understanding of the reality around you and ultimately leads to a better judgment and a better life. So you may ask why, why really a better life? Because, and I read this in this book called uh, Thinking in Bets, it says there are exactly two things that determine how your life will turn out, the quality of your decisions and luck. So if you have a better understanding of the world around you, you would develop a better judgment. And a better judgment leads to better decisions and a better decisions lead to a better life. And so one more, one more thing that I, that I noted about, uh, I think it's, 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 it's the most important maybe uh, of all, is, is really learning new domains and the skills. So if you are not... If you're not making 1 million a year, but instead you're making, I don't know, 50K, 100K, it's because you are paying 900K a year in the in cost of your in ignorance. You not knowing. And this is, this is huge. When I, I, when, I, when I first heard this, it, was, it just blew my mind. It's just you are paying 900K in costs of ignorance. You knowing how to make 1 million. And so... You could have started uh, in in twelve in twenty four months. You could have started reading about business, all aspects, all necessary skills, and 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 different parts of the business, and and learn about marketing, sales, design, engineering, business strategy, branding, storytelling, product development. I don't know fundraising, persuasion, and the rest. In twenty four months, you could read twenty four books on, on all these topics, and really separate yourself from the, from the rest and really start implementing all these ideas and make more money so these 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 are just some 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 examples that I, that I think they are very important when when we are talking about importance of reading the power is like a superpower really to me yeah so it's uh um of course when when you mentioned nonfiction and especially business related books uh it's absolutely you're absolutely right um i i do think that um uh, uh we we have all the you know all the 
knowledge and all the information out there that we can read and educate ourselves and become better, you know, business people, better uh, entrepreneurs, that's for sure. I also wanted to add to this point is that the fact that reading, mm, I, I think that reading, uh, it's not only not um, like business related material that it's important to read uh, to become more uh, successful. I think that um, uh, I think that you know history books uh, they give us a better perspective on you know on politics and on the decisions that we could make or not make you know in the present time. And I I've you know, I've figured that many conflicts uh, in negotiations, they happen because people just, you know, don't like sometimes reading <laughs> history books. But when you read uh, uh, history books, you realize how, you know, how many conflicts have already been solved and how they have been solved. So you also learn how to negotiate, how to to be a better um, ne negotiator and how to handle the difficulties because uh, and this is something that I've uh, the, the insight that I've learned from my recent uh, like from, from my recent reading because I've been reading lots of history books in the last couple of years and um, you know they just call me down you know and tell me okay uh, this ha this situation happened before and this is how people handled it and you know it means that we can handle it as well so there's a yeah i think that also gives a lot of confidence um and um even fiction <laughs> even like if we uh, uh even fiction fantasy that right now we're reading fantasy books with my students in the reading club in uh, in the studio and uh it's also very much very insightful and as you mentioned earlier um uh this sort of reading reading fiction and you know trying to understand the characters it gives um a better understanding a better perspective on it makes you act an active listener and it helps you to understand other people's perspectives and this is like an essential skill for in anything like almost anything on any level um, so I, I find it also very helpful, um, active reading when you interact with the characters, um, when you speak to them, we, uh, on our sessions, we sometimes even, you know, we develop like fantasy dialogues with the characters, trying to convince them, trying to, you know, get more information. <laughs> and this is something that I call like active reading, trying to, to interact with intellectually with the text uh, yeah so um <laughs> i mean the list goes on and on we can we can we can talk sure. about this for hours just just the importance of it and just the, all the positive effects of it and let alone all the papers and, and research that that have been done and talks about the re how reading rewires our brain how reading makes makes us more intelligent this is crazy. Yeah. You can you can get smarter just by by reading, and and and, and people don't do it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the next thing, and I think that's the question of time management and the question uh, that we're going to talk about right now. How to you know how to do that? Well, so we've spoken about why, but now let's talk a little bit about how. Uh, I know that you you are like you you have like a fantastic ability to read a lot <laughs> you mentioned that you you have this talk that you've published uh, that you're reading uh well you've read 32 books uh in, in a year that's that's a lot and uh that means that you your you, your time management somehow includes you know this reading routine uh, so let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, but before <laughs> we delve into your um, your talk, I would like to share a little quote that I found and I really like. Um, uh, that 
actually uh, changed the uh, my perspective on you know how to include reading in my routine. So I'm just going to share my screen. Um, okay, and uh, yeah. So just have. Hmm. Sorry. Yeah. So here it is. Um, yeah, I hope, yeah, I hope everybody sees it. So, um, one of my favorite authors is Winston Churchill. Uh, I've been reading his books, uh, since, yeah, I, I've read it like six or seven, of uh, his books recently. Uh, and, um, somebody asked Churchill, what shall I do with all my books? And, um, the answer was read them. <laughs> But if you cannot read them, at any rate, handle them and, as it were, fondle them, peer into them, let them fall open where they will. Read on from the first sentence that arrests the eye, then turn to another, make a voyage of discovery, taking, um, taking soundings of uncharted seas. Let, uh, set them back on the shelves with your own hands. Arrange them on your own plan so that, so that if you don't know uh, what is in them, you at least know where they are. If they cannot be your friends, let them at any rate be your acquaintances. If they cannot enter the circle of your life, do not deny them at least a nod of recognition. And I absolutely <laughs> adore this quote. First of all, I think it's, you know, uh, um, I, my one of my first childhood memories is me sitting. Um, we had like this huge, oh, huge bookshelves and uh, in the corridor of our apartment. And I remember sitting on the floor looking up and there was this one book that I remember and I remember the author, um, the the name of the author. This like for, and I still remember this book. Uh, I remember I remembered many authors that were in that bookshelf just by you know no I knew them by names. I didn't read. I was a child, so I you know I didn't read those these books, but I knew that they existed. And when I grew older, I you know I got curious about them. I could recognize the authors when I entered bookstores. So I said, oh, I should read that, you know, and this is from that childhood memory. So, and when, when the, you know, the books are somewhere in your apartment, you just sit down, you have a book next to you. So, you know, you can read a few pages and, you know, make, <laughs> if you if books are not your friends, well, at least make them, you know, your acquaintances. Uh, I think that's a nice idea, don't you think so? <laughs> I think, I, I, yeah, I think that's that's really beautiful, beautiful quote. It's a, it's a really nice nice way to you know just even if you don't want to read them, just just put them by your side and then I yeah. and, and make a, a, acquaintances. It's 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 all it's it's a really beautiful way to put it. And because why? Because because if you you heard this before, we are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. So if you are surrounded mm. with with really these uh, these incredible people, these geniuses that who wrote all these uh, all their ideas and the best lessons they learned from history, from their experience, you can live a thousand lives, and you you become an average of those incredible people. So the chances of you becoming incre incredible yourself goes 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 it's out up. of the window. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Let's talk a little bit about your way to do it. How do you organize your time? How do you introduce you know, these reading hours into your routine? I, I guess you're very busy because you have, have a job, you have a life and et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> so, and um, yeah, could you share some insights, please? Yeah, absolutely. So before maybe, I don't know, a year or two years ago, maybe a year ago, I, I, I did a talk. Uh, it was an internal talk uh, for my company. It was uh, an IT conference, but they also had some soft skills uh, category. They invited me because I was posting a lot about these uh, reviews of, of different books that I was reading. So, so the head of the conference, they, they asked me 
they they found me they they set a meeting and they asked me to to do also a talk regarding anything that that I might be interested in then uh, and I, I I made some proposals and then they accepted this one which was called the how I read 32 books a year and lessons learned mm-hmm. so and there in that talk I talked to uh, about how why I got started reading why reading is important why I got into reading how I got into reading and how I managed to read so many books without even trying without without having without even thinking about it just just like brushing my teeth it's just an activity that I do and so the way that so I I would give like a kind of summary of of mm-hmm. of what I talked there which basically i started with this quote i think it was the most important quote uh, that i've ever heard was was from aristotle which says 95% of everything you do is the result of habit and if you think about this this is insane <laughs> but this is it's insane. true this is insane 95% <laughs> of your life is is the result of the habits it means you are not actively choosing or whatever so it's 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 just it's just habits and this is powerful if if we if we just if we just understand understand this and so so we first make our habits then our habits make us right so and i think no matter what you want to achieve in life all you need to do is to be find really target and and build the right set of habits and make them your masters because you can never change your life until you change something you do every day and so so this is this is this is this is powerful idea if so so all we need to do is just is just to build the habits then the next question comes is that how we can do this how we can really build build habits and there are many books written written on the subject so uh, one of them that i that i really like is is from this book atomic habits yeah they all crashed <laughs> You probably seen it in social media. It's really popular, popular book. Atomic habits and mm-hmm. an easy and proven way to build good habits and break bad ones. So in this book, the author goes on and gives a framework on how behavior change works in in animals, uh, including humans. <laughs> so, so there are there, there are this idea of okay, there are these three layers of behavior change. That at the core we have the identity layer at the outer circle we have in the middle circle we have the processes and at, at the outer circle we have uh, the outcomes it says okay this is this is three layers of behavior change outcomes processes identity outcomes are about what you get processes are about what you do and identity is about what you believe in so and he says that okay the, the most effective way to build a habit is not to focus on the outcome layer which is what you want to achieve but on on identity layer, which is who you wish to become. So because, because once, once we are, we are really, we believe the person we want to become, we have an idea about that person. It's much easier to continue, continue the, all the behaviors that we, that those kind of people will do. For example, Hmm. years ago, I decided I like to be recognized with the with the following list a list of I wanted to become I wanted to be recognized as an athlete as a reader as an engineer and as a leader so I started to things to add things to my daily routine which in the long long run will turn me to a person whose identity is tied with this list to become an athlete I started a workout habit to become a, re- a reader I started a reading habit easy to become an engineer, I started a coding habit. And to become a leader, I started an array of habits. I so just I had a to... random, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I had this no, random, no. Uh, you know, association. Uh, when you, it's like, you know, general settings in, in, a, in a, you know, just setting up the way you, you set the general settings and it starts to work. Just, you know, yes. the device starts to work. <laughs> And then you can <laughs> kind of set, set the other things up. But before that, you just create the general settings, the default settings, and things yeah. start to change. Oh, well, that's interesting. It, okay, sorry. And, it, and, the, and the rest is just a routine. So you just, you just, mm-hmm. you just set up the configs, the, the basic 
the, the basic, how to say, the default settings. You just, because I, I, by default, we are, house, house or default is set, it's set by the environment, it's set by the parents, it's set by everything that was, that you had no control over at the beginning. So you have to go and, and change it a bit. Maybe you raised in a home a household that they never gave you a book to, to, to read other than the school books. Or so, so, so you have to, so you have to actively go and look at your defaults and change your defaults. You put, you, you, you really put it beautifully. So, so the, the, yeah, as I said, the most effective way to build a habit is to, is to really look at this core, core idea, the person we wish to become. So to become a leader, I, I started to add, uh, to do some, uh, some, some different things. So I started to practice more clear and concise communication. I started to, if I, if I had a question for someone, I wouldn't send them 10 messages. I would do everything in one message with greetings and, and relevant information and try to cut all, all unnecessary you know, words and sentences and then send it. I was, I was trying to be more a people-oriented person. So I actively started, okay, how I, can, how I can become a people-oriented person? So I need to put others' needs first and ahead of mine. If, I, if, if I'm at work and I, if my colleagues, they have, they have some, some, some problems on their mind, I would, I would first tackle that. I would first go and help them. So helping them is more important than, than finishing my own personal task because I could, I, I could do, do it later because that's, that's what leaders do, right? They take care of, take care of people. And a bunch of other things that, that I just figured and I tried to do just, just simple habits. So the key, the key idea here is that when you, when you do, so, so, so our, our identity is basically the result of our behavior and our behavior is the result of our habits. So to change your identity, we can simply change your habits. So this, this, this mm. is the beautiful thing about it. So you, you can basically rewrite your own personality code not all of it but an important chunk of it the, so this is so so you have the power to decide what defines you and who you identify with and and this is this this is this is immense power and uh, and this is all all within our control so this this was all about the three layers of behavior change and then it good and the author then goes on and talks about four laws of behavior change, how we can, how we should consider these four laws while starting or breaking a bad habit or starting a new habit, building a new habit. So these four are making it obvious, making it uh, attractive, making it easy and making it satisfying. Basically, if, if, if you do all these things, the, the likelihood of a new behavior being formed it goes out of the window. It's it's and and I have I have tried all of them, so I can quickly go through some, give some small explanations about each of them. The first one is about making it obvious. So there there are there are some techniques that also explained in the book. One is called habit stacking, and another one is called a specific point in time. So one of the best uh, best ways to build a new habit is to find a current routine you're doing and stack the new behavior on top. This is called habit stacking. And here's the formula. After current habit, I will do the new habit. Or after the current routine, I'm doing the... the and this, is, this was exactly how I build my morning reading habits. So every day in the morning when I wake up, no matter what time, mm -hmm. I brush my teeth, I wash my face, go prepare a cup of co co coffee, come to my living room, sit on my couch, and pick a book from my coffee table that I'm currently reading and read for at least half an hour. And this is this is how I stack all these things uh, on mm -hmm. top of each other. And it, after you know, after initial weeks, two three weeks into the process, I was doing this consciously. But after a while, it just it just became automatic. I don't. I, I remember one day I just I was just in the middle of my reading. I I look at the clock. I see okay, what happened when I decided to read? <laughs> I, <laughs> it was. Uh, and it, it was 20 minutes already passed. And uh, am I in the mood in, even in reading? Maybe I was sick. I don't know. I, it was just automatic behavior. And I was doing it. I said, okay, it's, it's already 20 minutes passed. I just, I, I just continued another 10 minutes and I finished my reading session. And that's, that's the power of, be, of building a routine. You do it without thinking whether you want to do it or not or whether you feel like doing it or not. Not relying on motivation and willpower and all the chemical reactions happening inside your body, your brain, 
every day randomly affecting your mood, your energy level, and ultimately your decision-making process. And so in software terms, we have this, uh, we have this, uh, you want to say something? Yeah, I had a question here. Um, and I guess this is a question that I'm most oftenly, he- that I most oftenly hear from, uh, uh, you know, specific, especially parents of small children. You know, this is so difficult to find a time when you have the uninterrupted 10 minutes or 15 minutes. So even if you decide, okay, I'm going to wake up and, you know, sit down for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And I've just, well, uh, the, the problem is that you usually do not know whether you are going to have them or not. So, um, um, and then they say, okay, well, you know, we're parents now, we just can't read. Um, I had, you know, I had my own tricks. <laughs> I, I have my own ideas about this, you know, because I also have two small kids. And the way we decided to do it is that, you know, I what I say to them is usually uh, when when they started talking. Of course, before they started talking, it was difficult to explain it to them. But I say, okay, this is n- now I'm reading, and probably this is a good time for you also to you know look at the pictures, maybe pick up a book and see if there's anything interesting in there. So they have their own books and they can just copy my behavior. And this is what they do. And I said to them also, you know, if you if you don't feel like it, that's okay. But, you know, I'm going to sit down right now for 10 minutes. And this is, you know, this is what I'm doing. This is my game. And you can't interrupt me. But this is for children who are like three, three plus. But um, I know some parents are, you know, really, really struggling with finding this uninterrupted time. So how do you respond to that? I know there are no magic solutions, but maybe you have some ideas, <laughs> insights. I don't know what. <laughs> yeah, I think these are just excuses. I, I think we have 24 hours in a day. And if you're saying you cannot find time, you don't have a time problem. You have a prioritization problem. Your, your priorities are not clear. If your priorities are clear, and if you're aware, you're aware of uh, how you're spending your time at work, at home, your, your personal time, you, you can find plenty of time to do everything. And this is, this, 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 I never accept this because every, who, who doesn't have 10 minutes? Even the, uh, even pro- president of the United States, they, 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 every day they get the time to read how, how the president of the United States can do it, how the Benjamin Netanyahu can do it. And he's, and I believe he's, 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 he's the, the smartest guy ever. How these guys with all these big matters, they have the they have to make these super hard decisions every day they are under stress they are they have a huge schedule how these guys can find it and you you cannot find it so you the problem is is basically prioritization you don't have clear priorities what is what is important to you is personal growth is uh, improving yourself is making more money is uh, are are they important to you? If if not, you don't you you, you better you, you better keep saying hey I don't find I don't find the time to read. This hmm. this is just this is just a priority. So once it's a priority, you will find ten minutes in the toilet. Even if in the morning you go to the toilet, you can you can just spend ten minutes there just to do. The, good point. By the way, do, do, a do hideout yeah. is a good thing. <laughs> I have a question. Did you feel like you had to let go of some other habits when you started your reading habit? Did you have to say, okay, unfortunately, I will have to give up something else that, you know, that took up that half an hour uh, before you start? Or you probably just, it was, it was okay. <laughs> So, I mean, to, if you don't do that, if you don't do reading, it's obvious what you're doing. Majority of people, it's, it's super clear. They are in social media. They are just, so if they, there's this uh, tracking system, you can track your phone. And every week I have this uh, report is given to me. How much time last week on average, every day I spend on my phone. And then it shows all the apps that, that, that you have spent time on. And you can go on and you can, and for, for most, for majority of people, it's just Instagram and Facebook and all these social media, YouTube. And it's for most of them, they, on average, they spend half an hour, one hour, two hour. It depends on, on, on different, they, they're just spending time there. 
So you can, you can just free up time. So I was happy to give up that time, the time of spending, wasting basically on, on everything else which is, it can be mm-hmm. talking maybe with some, someone, maybe, I don't know, a uh, 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 distant friend of mine or something like that, friend of a friend, they, they need advice or something, or I don't know, just going in social media, checking different things, just because it's a rabbit hole, it's just, uh, hack, they hack your brain, it's just uh, unpredictability, they just randomly think, show you like things next, uh, one, one after another, so this is how you hack uh, basically humans, you just show, unpre- it's like a gambling machine. Gambling machine, why people keep doing it? Because, because you never know what's, what comes next. And this is the same for, for social media. And this is what they do. It's just they show you randomly, oh, now an animal, now president of the United States, now another person dancing. It's just random and, and we can just keep doing it. And, and this keeps uh, how they keep our attention. So the, the thing I do is just I, I delete this social media. Every, every time I want to use it, I just say, okay, set a timer for five minutes. I, I install it including the time for installation just going back and forth and then trying to see maybe some friends some updates from some friends and just getting out and then i have the alarm just 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 going off and i'm deleting it so you can you can find time you can find time because i'm pretty sure you're spending a majority of people they're spending hours yeah. on social media for as an entertainment you can you can cut 10 10 10 minutes 15 minutes of your entertainment to something actually productive and, and important Okay, uh, we have a, some questions coming in. Uh, this one is uh, from one of our listeners, Borshad Shadow. Nice to meet you. Um, nice talk. Thank you. Um, and I also wanted to know about Daniel Streaks freeing a lot. Yeah, so we've talked a little bit about uh, time management and how you can, you know, really limit your social media time or maybe, you know, just, uh, just, first of all, analyze how you spend your time and find this, uh, this uh, black hole that, you, that takes um, some extra time that you have. And uh, after you have analyzed it, uh, after you've built awareness of how you spend your time, find this 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes, whatever feels good for you and start the reading habit. But now let's really proceed to this question. Uh, how do you manage to read so so much? <laughs> okay. Yeah, sure. So, so I so so the the maybe one of the reasons I'm reading a lot is that I have really interesting topics, different topics: engineering, psychology, science, history. You name it, productivity. I have all these. I have this big library, and and majority of it maybe two thirds of it I haven't read yet and I'm just keep adding and more and more to it. So I, I really created this budget every month, maybe 100, 150 euro I'm spending on, on books. So I'm always have really interesting, intriguing titles around me. And this, this really helps a lot. Every time I'm entering my living room, I see all these shiny books, interesting titles. They, they act as a trigger for my curiosity. So this is, this is, so there are a bunch of little things I do. This is one of them. And also when you spend a lot of money on something, you have this really, this feeling, this urge to get your money's worth. And in this case, the money's worth is the education you get from reading a book. So, so th- these are two things. Another, an- another one is that uh, I, I am not, I, I really, because we have this, uh, this, this really strong feeling, this uh, need for closure. All of us have it. That's why many people, when they start something, they have this feeling that, oh, I have to finish this. No, for me, it's, it's, so I, I, I'm actively fighting against it because, they, because if I'm wasting my time with, with one book that maybe is, isn't that good, maybe isn't that insightful, maybe the author wasn't really as good as, uh, Mark, as, as, good as uh, his, his marketing team. So he mm-hmm. had a really better marketing, marketing team than, than, a, than, a write, than writing skills. So he cannot maybe keep the author uh, reader's attention. So I'm just giving it up. So I just, I just skim through. So I, I don't feel if I don't get much out of it, I just go page, page after page, after page, after page to just find something interesting. If I don't, I just close it. So, and I abandon it immediately. So I put it because I have so many good other books that I can spend my time on. So that's, mm-hmm. that's another one. Just, just, just skimming through and then drop, drop, dropping titles that, that are not that interesting that, that don't keep you engaged. Maybe even it's a good book. But it's not good for you because you cannot, because you cannot keep the engagement, keep keep your attention on it. So this is another thing I do. 
another one is that in the morning usually so one of the laws was making make it satisfying so i have this coffee thing and uh, so the first really insulin spike of the day is, is really reward for my reading activity so kind of i associated this good feeling this this reward with reading so that's how you basically can trick any any animal <laughs> monkeys yeah. and hamsters that's how scientists basically trick monkeys and hamsters to change their behavior and we are the same we we, we can do the same when it comes to behavior change we are the same and uh, well, so I, I, will, I will try those tricks on myself as well mm -hmm. and and yeah basically that's it reading different topics every month having interesting topics around and, and not reading one I, I never read one book at a time so i always have several different books open so in different times, I might be interested in different things. Maybe I, the, in the morning, some psychology, in the evening, maybe some business insight or something. So I just, I allow my mood to, to decide which one to pick. And this way, never boredom, never stops me from reading. So I have always, always yeah, something well, interesting on the side. Thanks for these insights. Uh, I would add to that, that uh, like Winston Churchill here advised, you know, just put books in random places and, you know, taste them uh, when you sit down on a couch or, you know, you go to... Yeah, uh, exactly. Don't commit room. immediately. You don't need to be big, big commitment. You just maybe need yeah. a slight... You know, just take um, a peek. <laughs> And also, I noticed that in the morning, for uh, you know, there are morning people and and night people. So, um, for example, when it comes to concentration, my concentration is best uh, in the morning. So, I read faster in the morning, just you know, simply because I'm I'm just more awake, and it it takes me more time to process uh, more complex ideas at night. So, uh, I prefer to spend fifteen minutes reading the whole chapter in the morning rather than you know struggling with um uh, being you know with my being tired in the evening when i and i and then just reading a few lines and repeating them etc cetera, etc cetera. so for me this is another trick that works to read uh, uh to read like less time but more effectively um i would add to that um that if you feel like it's not going well switch the genre so if you really yeah. you know like productivity books or you know business books and it doesn't work just switch the genre just go you know read fantasy read something else it doesn't matter which genre you're reading even if it's not directly related to the like to your current interest current like i i would say a like business interest or entrepreneur interest the reading the fact of reading even if it's fantasy or history or whatever it is or romance it will bring it will give you ideas very creative ideas that you will implement in a, in most un unexpected ways this is what i think is really important don't get stuck with a genre you don't like Thank you very much for the question. And we have another question from the YouTube channel that I just received. Let me just put it on screen. <laughs> uh, well, this got my picture, but it's not my question. <laughs> so it's just from the YouTube channel. Uh, I, unfortunately, I don't know who posted this, but uh, thank you for the question anyway. Uh, what do you think about audio books? Do they have the same effect? Thank you for the question. And yes, Daniel, I guess it's uh, over to you. <laughs> so audiobooks so what can i say audiobooks yeah maybe for some books that uh, they don't need that much concentration and then uh, really going going back because sometimes this is it they, they never work for me basically audiobooks I, why because i want to take notes i want to take i want to highlight stuff i want to go back easily and and uh, and read again what I just read. I want pause. I want, okay, I just read, read one sentence and this was a really rich sentence. I need to think about it. I need to maybe maybe contemplate a bit. And audiobooks is kind of, it's uh, they, they don't allow you to do that. So they don't allow you to go deep and then and, and slow. They, it's, it's just the pace and many times you might be, maybe I, it was my experience and I was just doing something and I just forgot for five minutes that this is on my, and I'm listening to somebody. It's just, I don't know. This 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 never really worked for me because I read mostly read the uh, nonfiction, and the nonfictions that are 
I'm currently needing need need them because I'm I don't know I'm developing a product and I and I'm reading about design how to I should do these pieces of design or how I should do I don't know the onboarding of, for my application or how so I need I need to really highlight I need to think I need to take notes so later I can review review the notes by the way the application that I have one of the features is that if you took some notes it just shows you it, it just they pop up like Instagram stories. Uh, after 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 some time for for frequent mm-hmm. review so you always have something pop, popping up and you say hey i have to review this great book i read i don't know six months ago so this way you never forget ideas of a great book and mm-hmm. audiobooks I, I i because i can't do that i was i i, I just i just quit it okay uh well i have a different experience by the way with audio i have a little slightly like more positive experience with audiobooks um I was quite skeptical about them for quite a long time until actually, until actually I, I had babies and uh, my hands were constantly busy with, you know, someone or something. And um, there was quite a long period of time when I used audiobooks uh, and during a walk or, you know, just walking uh, in the neighborhood or sometimes driving. Um, but the, the the sort of books that I listened to were mostly fiction, not not you know the type of books that you are talking about. So um, I would say that you know if the person is asking about like generally about audiobooks, I guess it's worth giving it a try. Uh, but it really depends on the type of a book you're reading and the type of the you know the <laughs> uh, for me it was very important that the voice of the reader was pleasant and <laughs> um sometimes um uh, there you know certain uh books are made in this robotic voice that you know that you just yeah. really <laughs> listen to and, and me too it's, me too me yeah. too it's, it's super important yeah so there are some really great readers and i'm happy by the way i think i'll put this in my notes I'll I'll research because there are some famous and great actors that read books and they just yeah. have fantastic, fantastic um, um, recordings. Uh, I yeah you know, I've, I've came across, but I I don't have a collection um, right now, so I, this is a good idea. I'll just I'll research that. Okay, so that was this question. Let me see if there are any other questions. By the way, if, if anyone is listening to us right now on YouTube or LinkedIn, you're welcome to ask a question. So, uh, no, not that I'm aware of right now. Um, okay, um, so we've discussed you know, why we should read and how we can <laughs> how we can do it, and. Um, Maybe I have another question, which is more social. Uh, do you feel like you have to discuss what you're reading with other people, or it's just great the way it is? Or what? What do you feel? Yeah, I think it's super important if you to have a circle of people to share these things with and and discuss and really try to really engage with this. And 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 this is, I think, it's the I I, I read somewhere that the the, we learn highest when we are engaged in a, in a discussion and uh, about a topic. So I think it's important. And, and to that point, I, I created a book club uh, here in Munich. And we every maybe every month we, we have some meetings and we meet with the members and everybody talks about, it's not about just one book. So everybody can talk about the books that they recently read or con- currently reading and share some insights mm-hmm. from these books. And this way, you always get the. You have to prepare something. Maybe it's five, ten minutes, so you have to go back to to some nice book you read, and this this helps you. And and, and there, once you present it, everybody puts some comments. They try to question things and maybe connect it with another idea from another book they read. So I think it's super important to join some some to create for yourself such uh, such circles, and so, yeah. so you can talk about it. Yeah, that's. Uh my feeling too i uh after having set up this reading reading club in in the studio in linguacom i've initially started it with teenagers and they were like really fan- fantastic participants because th- it was just uh it, 
it was just an experiment because we uh, read really serious books and for for their age and uh, it was it just went surprisingly well. So I decided to use that experience to create the club for adults and uh, also surprisingly it's it's one of the most thought provoking sessions that I have every week and this is really really great. We do it with uh, like in a framework of company training like english training for our company and it's just going really really well um um i have another question this is going to be our last today and i think it's a provocative question um do you would you want to write a book yourself one day maybe not today but one day <laughs> okay yeah, I mean, I have thought of this, and uh, I, I I already do a lot of a lot of writing, but I don't publish them. So I write some articles, and mm -hmm. uh, I, but I keep it to myself. And they are they are basically maybe the collection of things that I'm learning from different things, from mostly around business and and maybe some self help, maybe stuff like that. But definitely, I, I want to definitely do it someday in future. That's why I'm I'm really really care a lot about collecting all these highlights and notes from all these different books that I'm reading and categorizing them and then and, and remembering them and one of the basically main reasons that I created this app is to have all of this digital digital collection of the books what? shelves notes and keep mm -hmm. them keep them really somewhere nice so I have I later I can query them the way I want or maybe writing a book or, or, or something like that. But uh, yeah, but I will, I will definitely do that once I have much more success in the, the, because, because I'm really thinking of building some products and uh, maybe if, if, if I could achieve that, then I will write about it. Then I will publish all these things. Hey, this is, I, I could do some extraordinary work here and this is how you can do it too. At least I have the evidence that these ideas work, my ideas work. So then I, I, I'm feeling confident to share it with others and, and help others as well. Well, so first of all, I really wish you uh, start your book. <laughs> it's uh, it, anyway, you're you, really you're uh, just the inspiration from uh, the fact that, you know, there's there are people out there who really think books are important. This is fantastic. And I think just this idea is really encouraging and inspiring for many people and uh yeah i hope one day you'll write about also about a business book <laughs> and who knows yeah. what maybe another book who, that you you don't expect <laughs> exactly yeah. you um, never know you never know what's around you the never next know one. what about you uh, have you thought of um, some, uh, writing something I, you know, I'm terrified of this, uh, but I really enjoy the writing process. I really feel like I like writing about life and about, uh, I, you know, I write every day for myself. <laughs> I, awesome. I, you know, I've made this a habit because I think, again, writing just also comes from practice and from polishing up your sentences, making your message clearer and clearer. And I think, uh, what one of the most inspiring writing exercises that I've ever had was in this. Uh, that was this lovely workshop given by um, Nadia Jacobson. She's she's one of the creative writing trainers here in Jerusalem. So she said, "Okay, take a page and set a timer. Just you know, take a blank page, set a timer, five minutes, write." And, and then she she gave some you know random idea. Um, um okay write about she said write about one thing that you saw today that others didn't see okay mm -hmm. and then the result was just you know fantastic shocking because you know <laughs> people you have you you can't imagine what people can write in 5 minutes on a, a writing prompt so, so this was my this was really a, kind of an eye opener for me i said okay if in 5 minutes i can write a text that is quite in, you know quite interesting for others so it and you have to work on it and i started doing this with my students they love it they do great writing prompt you know great writing exercises so yes as an answer to your question i think I would be very happy to write a book one day about life. And uh, I don't know. I, I'm trying to do it. 
<laughs> and then maybe after I've collected enough material, I'll try to work on it. <laughs> awesome. Well, I think writing is, is, is just more than writing. It's just when you write, writing is about clear thinking. You understand when you are writing about something, you just realize, okay, I have no clue about this. I thought I knew this. <laughs> now that I want to write about it, okay, I, I, I knew nothing. So it no, just uh, teaches you thinking. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It sharpens your thinking. It makes you a much better communicator, even if you don't, if you never publish it. And um, well, this is another inspiring thing. My uh, my husband's grandmother is ninety years old, and she has just published a book about her life. And it's not I her see. first book. <laughs> uh, so I asked her, you know, how do you write a book? How do you you know, just one, one day you sit down, you write a book. So she said, yeah, this is what I did. I just <laughs> sat down and started writing just like that. And I said, look, I, I want to write a book one day. She said, don't say it. Don't say one day. Just do it. You know, write a few lines, write a short story and then write another short story and you'll see how it goes. And um, yeah. So anyway, thank you very much for this conversation. I'm sure when once your app goes on, you know, to Android, uh, let us know. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, well, I just happen not to be an iPhone. I like iPhones. I just don't have one. And <laughs> I guess you know, anyway, we'll we'll share the link to your app. Uh, um, I guess uh, on the channel once the video is there. I, I, well, the video is already there, so we'll just uh, share it in the comments. And um, yeah. Um, hope we read m many more great books and have more discussion topics very absolutely <laughs> very soon. that was also a pleasure talking to you thank and, you yeah i love to talk about books so anytime <laughs> yeah perfect thank you very much and have a good night <laughs> ciao ciao